Like your mother, your heavenly mother, loves you perfectly. She is involved in your life. She cares about what happens to you. We as adults need to understand that our heavenly mother is available. That when we get banged on the knee, or if we want to say thank you, if we want to tell her how our day was or however it was, we can absolutely bask in this beautiful revealed truth. All right, everyone, welcome back to Saints Unscripted. Now we have got with us MacArthur Krishna. Did I say all that right? All good. MacArthur Krishna. Um, For people that are unfamiliar with you, and I've only barely just met you as well, but for our audience that may not know you, tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of what what brings you here today. My grandmother was always very um, intentional that I should introduce myself that I come from Utah Pioneer Stock. (laughs) So let's just start there, right? If I'm going to introduce myself, my ancestors crossed the plains, which has absolutely nothing to do with me probably, but it was really important to her. And so um, I come from Utah Pioneer Stock and I was um, woken up on Saturday mornings by my mother singing the BYU fight song, right? Rise and shout. Because that was the call to get up and do your chores. Um, And we would go up to the church building to get onto the satellite to watch BYU basketball. And so I was raised, I would say, oh, and my last qualification, um, when my local town asked the Mormon church to put together a parade float to represent our beliefs, the ward built a model of the Salt Lake Temple and volunteered different kids <laughs> to sit on the float. And so I rode the float as the person from my family to represent Mormons and the families are forever to our entire community. Wow. So I'm just telling you, I come from a well-anchored you know, LDS background. <laughs> That's good to know. That's good to know. And you're an author. I am an author. Yes. So but, but you're, you're a lot of other things as well. I would assume you're a mom, you're an author, yeah. um, do you have business any owner, business uh, artist, owner. Uh, world traveler, uh, late sleeper, night owl, all sorts of things. So you don't do the art for your books, do you? Oh, heavens no. I can't draw with a stick. <laughs> so, um, no, I do textile beaded art, which is a way you can do art without actually having to draw. Hmm. Um, no, the books, so we have now done, um, personally, I've, I've done in the teens of children's books, but the ones that we've done for Desert Book were the Girls Who Choose God series. Um, so this was the Girls Who Choose God, the Bible and Book of Mormon, and now Church History. And we did the Heavenly Family, Earthly Families books. Now those books, the first set, The Girls Who Choose God, is illustrated by the magnificent and magnanimous Kathy Peterson, whose work it just leaves us in awe. So she came to the table with us in the beginning because we were very clear that we wanted those books to be um, noble and gracious, but earthly and accessible, and she's perfect. And then the next series of books we did with Caitlin Connolly, who is the, the fabulous thing is that Caitlin Connolly After the church saw the cover art that was on that book, they commissioned her to do a heavenly family portrait, basically. And it's 12 foot by eight feet hanging in the church museum now. So Caitlin offered this amazing piece of art to the canon um, on heavenly parents. And so now we're doing a girl's guide to heavenly mother. And that one's published and released. And you can get that. Lots of people enjoyed it for Mother's Day. The other one that's now in the works that will be released. We'll see what happens with Corona crazy. Um, there's the boy's guide to heavenly mother. And the great thing about that art is actually, I love artists. I love working with visually creative people who can take an idea and reframe it and express it in a way just so powerful. And so, no, I am not actually that sort of artist. Um, but it's been an absolute amazing thing to be able to work with, with the artists to use their talents. Cause I don't know if you're aware of this, but there has not been a very large heavenly mother canon of artwork. That was, you, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Understatement, right? I was going to say artwork and 
written work as well. There's not much on it, but. So what's interesting about that, okay, so I get that question a lot. Like, how are you writing a book about Heavenly Mother when there's not that much about her? So number yeah. one, the church has an essay called Mother in Heaven in their gospel topics, and it lists a whole variety of quotes about information we know about her, and it cites an article from BYU Studies, which according to BYU Studies is the most frequently downloaded article they've ever done. And it's called A Mother There by Paulson and Polito. And a mother there tracked a historical survey of all the times that Heavenly Mother had been mentioned in church history. Over 600 times. Really? So one, there's a lot more than what you actually think. So everybody's always surprised by that one. Two, their research found that no prophet or apostle had ever said, ever, 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 let me emphasize, underscore, ever said we should not speak of her. That was crazy taboo that had nothing to do with gospel. Is this in reference to the, the rumor that we don't talk about her out of respect for her or whatever that was? Yes, or that she's too sacred, or that Heavenly Father's protecting her, or that we don't know enough, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? And you're saying hogwash to that. Hogwash. That's actually one of my favorite words. <laughs> in fact, my co-author made me take it out of the book, rightfully so, but I said, um, if you know about Heavenly Mother, it helps clear out a lot of hogwash. Hmm. There's a lot of hogwash that's baked into our societies. And any time Earth does not match up to the models that we know from divinity, Earth is the one that's out of line, not divinity. Hmm. So the more we know about Heavenly Mother and the relationship of partnership between Heavenly Mother and Heavenly Father, the more we can evaluate our earthly systems. So get rid of the hogwash. Wow. Okay. So tell me what this book is about then, uh, a girl's guide yeah. or a boy's guide to heavenly mother, or are they, are they the, the same? Or how are they? The They're same not the same. Them? They're not the same at all. So the girl's guide, so our writing on girls started because a three-year-old, my co-author, Bethany Brady Spaldings, her three-year-old daughter was picking up a cartoon book of scripture, flipped through it. And the author, while focusing on um, righteous people in the Bible had decided not to include a single woman. Hmm. And her, she said, Mom, where are the girls? I want to read about the girls. And so that's why we started writing the Girls Who Choose God series from the scriptures. Well, now that three-year-old at that time is now 13. And she's developed spiritual muscles and spiritual questions that are much more complex and much more resounding than just where are the girls. So Bethany realized this a couple of years ago that her daughters were ready for more meat. You know, more, okay, my husband's a vegan, I shouldn't say meat. They're ready for more oomph, right? Yeah. More truth. And luckily we have it, right? We have a revealed truths that are powerful. And so she and I sat down and we wrote A Girl's Guide to Heavenly Mother. And it's divided into three sections. The first section is what do we know about Heavenly Mother? And it turns out quite a bit. Not just the 600 references that I mentioned, but Bethany and I in our book have prophets and apostles and female church leaders quotes on, I think, every, almost every single page. I mean, there's dozens of quotes in this book. And not pulled generally from the early days of the church, but from modern. So you'll recognize the names, right? This is Kimball and Maxwell and Holland and Ballard and like on and on and on. These people have talked about Heavenly Mother and who she is. So we actually know quite a bit about who she is. And then the second part of the book is, if you know these things about your Heavenly Mother, what does it mean for me? As a woman, how does this change my understanding of my role in this world? So that's really, really important. The third part of the book is, once you have this knowledge, how do you apply truth in your life? How do you actually set out to use truth every day? So we're launching this book, pulling it together. Um, Bethany calls me the holy harasser because it was my job to round up the 27 artists that we needed to use and coordinate all of their schedules and all of their works of art and deadlines and hi everybody, hi everybody, hi everybody. And um, everybody needs a talent, right? So I wholly harassed and the artists were fabulous and wonderful, um, these sets of artists. So we start to publicize that we're going to release this book and a woman gets a hold of me and says, why didn't you do a children's book? No, like, I know you write for girls and you have daughters. I have three daughters. Bethany has three daughters. But like, why did you just do this, you know, as a girl's guide? So we wrote and I explained to her that there's really specific things that a woman needs to understand about her destiny in relation to Heavenly Mother. And they're not applicable to men, right? Like the idea that in Genesis, you were told you were made in her image. 
that's a really important idea for a girl who's 11, 12, 13 years old, beginning to be aware of and maybe struggling with body image, even adult women, important ideas that men don't generally have. So she said, fine, that's great, but let me send you an email. So this woman sent me a long email, compelling. I get on the phone to Bethany and I'm like, Bethany, we're going to have to do the boys guide. Like this woman just, she has five sons and she wrote me this email about all the things that she wanted and why she thought it was vital to teach her sons about Heavenly Mother. And she was right. It was a really potent list of why men should care about their Heavenly Mother. So this is not a girl's topic, right? This is not menstruation. Heavenly Mother is a topic that's actually equally applicable to men and women, just in really, really different ways. Hmm. So we're now doing the boys guide because you have a mother, right? This is an important bit of information for how you function in your life, how, what kind of woman you want to marry, how you set up a relationship, how you function in your office, how you go to school. BYU just released a report about how much women don't speak in classrooms. I heard about that. It is brutal. And so if you read this report and you see that women are often, one, not often speaking up, and two, that 70% of the feedback comments they get from the men in their classroom are derogatory or put downs. Like, no, no, that's not true. Okay, that's, that's not what they said. No, no, da, 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 da. Like undercutting comments. Sweet. If you are aware that the person across from you is made in Heavenly Mother's image and that you are Heavenly Mother's son and that perhaps how you speak to your own mother earthly or heavenly, should be reflective of that truth. Really compelling email about what she wanted to teach her sons. So Boy's Guide is coming hopefully this fall for sure by next Mother's Day 2021. But here's the thing. So I've been living in India for the last eight years. And the the examples, I'm sorry? Are you in India right now? (laughs) No, because I got kicked out. Um, the people with my kind of visa can't be in India, can't get into India right now. Mm. So yes. you're back in Utah. I am in Oregon. Yes. Oregon. What part? In Portland. Okay. You're in the pretty um, side of, of Oregon. That's really all that matters. It was kind of a requirement. I told my husband, like, life is too short to live someplace ugly. All right. I um, detailed us. Where were we? Yes. So we were talking about the need for Heavenly Mother for both right. women and men. And so from my standpoint, and hogwash, from my standpoint of living in India, India has some more egregious examples of what it means to be when a society doesn't value um, women. And Valerie Hudson has done some amazing work on when a society treats women as equals, they have higher, um, uh, longer lifespans lower rates of war, lower rates of disease, you know, more education, higher education levels. I mean, it's just this very, very obvious trend about what happens when a society functions according to the divine model. So let's be very clear. This is not some sort of crazy, woo-woo, like left-wing liberal feminist idea, right? Mm -hmm. This is divine, that Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother function as equals, as told by prophets and apostles. So when a country functions according to a divine model, it should be no surprise that the country does better. It functions better. So India has lots of egregious examples about why, what happens when you're on the other side of that, right? But the fact is, is it's also true here in America. It's also true here in settings where we would think we would know better. In my mind, if you are part of the gospel of Jesus Christ, then you understand your Heavenly Mother exists. You understand that she and Heavenly Father rule this universe together and that they want all the love and care. So there's this amazing quote by Elder Holland where it talks about what would the world's inhabitants know to understand that their Heavenly Parents are reaching across mountains and valleys and rivers and streams. I'm mixing that up a little bit. To reach out and hold them close and help them. So what would you know as a human being to know that you are loved like that and that you have a mother's love as well as a father's love and that your heavenly father and heavenly mother operate in perfect unity? I don't know about you, but for me, that's a game changer. 
that changes how I function in my marriage. It changes how I function with my children. It changes how I function with this really annoying taxi driver that I can't believe he just did that. Right? Mm -hmm. Like it changes the game when you understand the divine model of the universe. So President Ballard, it says, we have a divine plan designed by heavenly parents. Proclamation of the family talks about this. Like this is not news, right? Proclamation of the family is 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And so, actually it's not news from Joseph Smith's time. It's not news. May, and maybe I'm making a generalization here, but I feel like people are hesitant to talk about heavenly mother. Mm -hmm. Part of that's sure. probably to do with that, you know, that hogwash that we talked about earlier. Um, but I think people are also just afraid of, of speculating too much. Sure. Of saying something that, that we don't have maybe a, a doctrinal basis for. Um, and part of that so, is probably due to us not knowing what sources are available. But, but how do we get over that? And how do we become more confident? I got a great idea. Okay. So one, the website seekingheavenlymother.com has incredible resources on it if you go to their resources then you will see they have them divided into sections if you are the person who only wants to know what prophets and apostles have ever taught they have a section labeled that so you can be extremely clear that that is only who you're going to stumble across no fear of any speculation like you're not going to be tainted right it's right mm -hmm. there <laughs> if you are a person who's like, you know what? Interesting ideas. I wonder what other people are exploring about this. I wonder what else is out there. There's also scholarly articles and poetry and books and references of how to teach your children. So there's lots of things there. So in my mind, there's all sorts of things that we don't know, right? We have no idea in many, I won't say no idea. We have very limited idea of what heaven's going to look like. It doesn't hurt my testimony to speculate about that. It doesn't hurt my testimony to be like, I wonder if we're all going to live next to each other. I wonder if the concept of just like neighbors is no longer pertinent. I wonder, what does that look like? I mean, like, these are speculations that in no way damage my testimony, right? Mm -hmm. So I think Heavenly Mothers carried this taboo unjustified for a long time. And on the flip side, we've lost the blessings. We've lost the blessings of understanding this truth. Right now in India, you can't find out the sex of your unborn child because too many people abort girls. Now, if we understood that girls are just as divine and just as valued as boys, that would not be the case. And again, it's easy to point fingers at India because it's more egregious, but it's completely true everywhere in the world, as we've just seen from the BYU example, right? Yeah. So from my mind... There's so many things that we can learn and grow and bless our lives and bless other people's lives if we're willing to apply truth. This is truth, right? And so you may say, we don't know very much and that's speculative. Okay, go read A Mother There, the BYU Studies article with the 600 mentions, and they've cataloged the information. Like, we know Heavenly Mother's part of the plan of salvation. We know Heavenly Mother helped create the earth. We know Heavenly Mother this, based on quotes from prophets and apostles and people in our past. Like, until you think, I can't talk about this, I don't know enough, you, you might want to read to see if you actually know enough. Fair enough. Okay, so here's a question for you then, probably a speculative one, but, but why is it then, you know, we, we've kind of set aside the hogwash, why do you think that there are so few references in, you know, the scriptures to Heavenly Mother? Why has this knowledge been largely lost to the world? Okay, a couple of ideas. And now we are moving into speculation, so let's be very clear. Right. If someone is listening is uncomfortable with this, then this is not doctrine, and I'm very clear. So when we wrote the book, The Girl's Guide, we included all prophets and apostles and church leader quotes, because if I'm teaching my children, I want dead on solid doctrine. So yep. there's nothing in there speculative, okay? Now, if we're going to have a conversation, I have no problem saying, okay, let's talk about this. Wonder about this, wonder about this. I mean, that's just an intellectual exercise. And so happy to talk, but just let's, let's draw that line about what the book's about and how I would teach children versus how I'd have an adult conversation. Great. I appreciate so, that. Well yeah, said. Line drawn. <laughs> line drawn. So here's a couple of things. Actually, the term Elohim is plural and right. plural by gender. 
So if you go in to read Elohim, you can get an inner linear Bible, which I did, and read through all the different references to Elohim. And there's over 2,500, I think, references to Elohim. Now, clearly some of those are not Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother, right? Like you can just see from how it talks about it, that's, that's not, it can't be, right. right? But there's others like Genesis that say, you're created in the image of their image, in the image of God, that you male and female were created. Well, Heavenly Father and Jesus are male. So if I'm created in the image of a God, that probably means I'm also created partially characteristic. I can be created in their image, but physically I'm created in Heavenly Mother's image. Hmm. And so there's actually more in the scriptures than what you may realize. Mm-hmm. There's also a great article about Heavenly Mother in the Book of Mormon. Astounding. Totally speculative. Fascinating. So if you go to the Seeking Heavenly Mother website, they have this article posted there. So what's so great about this website is you don't have to do the work, right? Like Bethany and I spend years like digging up resources and trying to find them. Now you have like one-stop shopping. Like this is a place you can go to find lots of options. So this is your website. It's not mine. Actually, it was started by a group of BYU students and... Um, and I met them at an event and I told them I was happy to be on their board, but no, 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 this is, they've done it. They're amazing. Gotcha. And so, um, if you go to this website and you read this article, it actually talks about, um, purges at the, um, in the times of Nephi and Lehi and how the, the, the church would, you know, the, the learning and knowledge that we have went this way, and then there's a purge, and it went this way, and there's a gap there. So they talk about how the Book of Mormon has more references to Heavenly Mother, maybe, than what God taken out of the Bible because of X, Y, Z reasons. Now, again, I am a storyteller. I am not a biblical or Book of Mormon scholar. I'm not even a Heavenly Mother scholar, right? Mm-hmm. And so I want to be very careful that I'm sending people to other resources while I'm not representing that, like, this is my field. But it's fascinating. Like, go read and see, like, What could have happened there to make exactly answer your question? What could have happened? And maybe there's a lot more there than what you even know. So it talks about Heavenly Mother. They talk about God's love. The phrase God's love is used all over the scriptures. Now, if you think about God's love in context of who is the individual who is God's love, as in, if you're married, who is your love, right? Yeah. Reframes, right? Yeah. If you think about wisdom, some Heavenly Mother scholars say that the term wisdom is a female term. It talks about all the times where the God is actually personified as female. What about the chick gathering, the hen gathering her chicks? You know, mm-hmm. what about, you know, the woman who would forget her child, but I will not forget you? You know, there's all of these references to to deity being female that we don't think in our minds like, oh, that's Heavenly Mother. I mean, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Right. But the fact of the matter is, is until you actually think in your brain and you kind of dig out the things that are your assumptions, you don't know. You don't know if a hen gathering her chicks is talking about Christ, Heavenly Father, or Heavenly Mother, or maybe all of them. Because if they're united, it actually doesn't really matter, right? Right. So if Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother, Elohim, means God is united, it means, and we have quotes by this, by prophets and apostles to back this up, it means that the references, responsibilities, the characteristics of Heavenly Father are also Heavenly Mother's characteristics as a perfected being. Mm. So then you're like, okay, what do we know about Heavenly Father? We know this, we know this, we know this. Okay, so all those things also apply to Heavenly Mother, which doesn't mean they have this necessarily the same um, roles, but they absolutely um, have the same love for us. Mm. That's the most important thing. Yeah. President Kimball was the prophet who talked the most about Heavenly Mother. Not just Heavenly Parents, but Heavenly Mother. And I personally think, speculative again, is that his earthly mother died when he was 11. That's not speculation. His earthly mother died when he was young. My speculation is that that mattered to him. He missed out having a loving, powerful, nurturing influence on his life. And so Heavenly Mother was a way for him to turn and and to get that same um, love in his life, right? That's fascinating. That's fascinating. I think so. so. So just to wrap up, if you could leave our audience with one message, maybe mm-hmm. one all-encompassing thing about Heavenly Mother or about your research or about what you've learned, what would be most useful to them? Heavenly Mother loves you. And she loves you every day. And she loves you no matter what. And that she's not absent. She's not absent. 
we have this amazing story from President Lee who talks about um, a man trying to quit smoking. And finally, and he tried all sorts of things and just whatever. And one day he's reaching for his pack of cigarettes again. And he hears this motherly voice say, oh, Bill, just cut it out. And he knew it was his heavenly mother. Hmm. And if President Holland says to his heavenly mothers reaching out for us, reaching out to help us and be part of our lives, Sister Holland, Patricia Holland, who is part of the Young Women's um, General Board, has said that Heavenly Mother um, is weaving, Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother are weaving this grand tapestry of life, creating all that's around us and our life experience. Like your mother, your Heavenly Mother, loves you perfectly. She is involved in your life. She cares about what happens to you. Now my four-year-old adores her papa, adores her papa. But when she gets banged on the knee, she comes running for her mama. Mm. So we as adults need to understand that our Heavenly Mother is available. That when we get banged on the knee, or if we want to say thank you, if we want to tell her how our day was or however it was, we can absolutely bask in this beautiful revealed truth. Well said. Thank you so much. Do you have any final thoughts before we end or are you feeling good? I would just encourage people to go learn, go learn of her. Right. And so, and in whatever way. So for me, I'm a reader. So when I learn about something, I go read, but if you are a person who learns in a different way, there's lots and lots of ways to learn of heavenly mother, to, to reach out, to have a relationship, to have it be, have it bless your life. Right. And if you're already a person who's like, I already know heavenly mother blesses my life, then speak to people. Instead of being hesitant with what we know is a hogwash taboo, have in your mind that speaking of revealed truth, speaking of God's love, blesses people. Don't withhold blessings being afraid to speak of this. Well said. There you go. MacArthur Krishna, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, to, everyone, to everyone watching, if you like this episode, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We'll also try to remember to put in the description some of those resources you mentioned. Uh, I need to go check out that site right now because that's that's fascinating. Over 600, 600 Over, references. If you Google a mother there BYU studies, it'll take you directly to the PDF. You can download free and 600. That's fascinating. All right. MacArthur Krishna, thank you so much for joining us today. A pleasure. Thanks, Dave.